Hi there, my name is Dr. Arnott and I'm going to be taking you for uh, the next section in organic chemistry and what we're going to be starting with is uh, the, the section on alkenes which in your textbook is in uh, chapter 24 and I do suggest that you read your textbook and that you uh, look at more uh, all the information that revolves around alkenes. Um, this section is one of the interesting sections in the sense that alkenes are our first type of functional group and an alkene is a carbon that is double bonded to another carbon. I'm going to deal with this in a little bit more detail now. Um, but this type of situation, everything to you've seen before, before, the alkanes just have single bonds to carbon. Once we have a double bond to carbon, we are now in a position to start doing reactions on organic compounds. All right, um, Organic compounds that have double bonds in them um, are able to react and have reactions occur on them. So we need to understand exactly what this double bond means in order for us to kind of move forward. Now it might seem quite simple and innocuous when I draw out a very simple molecule like this. This is just a two carbon molecule with a double bond um, and alkenes, this ending bit ene, means that our parent with two carbons would be normally ethane, but it's a double bond, becomes ethene, all right, as in this nomenclature. We'll deal with nomenclature in, in the class. We'll see it's actually very simple. It's not too difficult. But the, the important thing here is even though this is such a simple molecule, we do need to understand this, just the inclusion of this extra bond here, a double bond instead of a single bond, has a very important um, uh, effect in terms of the way that the whole molecule reacts and importantly, the way that the molecule looks and the shape that it has. Okay, so the first thing that's important is that that second bond, all right, the first bond between any two atoms is going to be a sigma bond, but the second bond is a pi bond. All right, and if you understand your uh, uh, bonding principles, a sigma bond is the head-on, head-on overlap of two uh, orbitals. Uh, as an example, I could take the carbon and it would have an orbital with an electron in, and I've got another carbon with an orbital with an electron in, and these two orbitals are going to bond to each other, and that forms a sigma bond. A pi bond, though, isn't just these orbitals like that. It's, it's sp sp specifically a, a p orbital, all right? So here's the carbon. Normally, we draw out the p orbitals just, you know, like a dumbbell like that. I've put the carbon in the middle, all right? This is just a general representation of it. And then I draw this line indicating the sigma bond, which I had over here, the carbon, and we just draw our second p orbital over there. And this pi bond is this sideways overlap of these two orbitals. All right. By overlapping like that, they are forming what is known as a pi bond. Um, and of course, we'll have the two H's that are out there. Now, unfortunately, one of the things which is a little bit tricky to do, particularly when we're working on a flat piece of paper, is to appreciate that this molecule has a three-dimensional structure to it. And uh, so this, if we look at this, this whole molecule over here, the way I've drawn it here is perhaps probably the better representation. And the fact that this whole molecule is actually flat. Um, this hydrogen, carbon, and hydrogen, and this carbon, and this hydrogen, and hydrogen are all actually in the plane of the paper as I have drawn. Um, and the pi bonds, all right, although I've just drawn it as a line over here, the pi bonds actually extend above and underneath, below the plane of this paper. So it's kind of like this um, is a, my, the flat on my hand. And if I turn it and look at it on the side, this is the structure that I get over here. So even though I've drawn this flat, it, it's kind of like this H is coming out towards us and this is going towards the back and that one is going towards the back and this is coming out towards us over there. All right, so this picture that I have here is looking at it from the side like that. Okay, um, what we need to to do with these things is what we're going to do in our, in our class as we move forward is we're going to, under, we're going to look at uh, what uh, the shape of this molecule is and how we as organic chemists call this shape. We're going to learn 
that it's actually sp2 hybridized and i'm going to explain a little bit more what that means in class uh, and another important consequence of this this pi bond over here and this is a very important uh, uh, consequence is the way that if we had to draw out a molecule that looks like this we're going to put a ch3 there and an h here we're going to put a ch3 there and an h here Right, sorry about that. Uh, and this is four carbons, it's actually butene, um, but the double bond is on carbon number two, so it's butene. Um, this molecule here and this very similar looking one, which has exactly the same name, right, ready four carbons, so it's still butene. These two molecules are actually not the same thing. Um, and uh, it's the consequence of this pi bond which makes it not the same thing. And that's something that we're going to be looking at in class, is understanding that. If you want to find out more before we get into the class, then read your textbook and just start reading a little bit about the alkenes. It's really going to help you as we move into the class if, class, if, you, if you read that beforehand um, and start generating the questions in your mind um, as, as we go into, into the class and I'll be able to help you there. All right, we will see you uh, on the first Monday, the 15th of September.